I've had all kinds of time to study, but they've been humpting things went through my mind. I get up, uh, I like to read uh, Revelations 3 and 14. Say amen. Say unto the angel of the church of loud they see. Write these things, saith the Amen. To the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou work cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable, poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold, tried in fire. Did you know we're gold? We were tried in fire throughout. Amen. He said, I counsel thee to buy of me gold, tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich. And what raiment thou mayest be clothed. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes when I say that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. You can be seated. There are a few more places I want to read, but you know what? When you're established in Jesus, there's no side, there's no side shows. <laughs> I like that. It's all about him. There's no side show there. Amen. Yeah, I was thinking a lot of people personally. We're wrong today because they're preaching half truths. They said, "Say is that half truths?" I remember back in Genesis, back in Genesis when Abraham, when Abraham and Sarah was coming out of Kadesh there, and sure they ended in they entered to the, the kingdom there of Amalek. He was a king there, Amen. In the Gerar. When he went in there in order to protect her, they'd already made it up. Sir and Abraham had. When we go in there, we come in strange people. I'm proud of you, but this is what it means. He said, we come in someplace, you're my sister. Because he didn't want any harm to come to here. Amen. But so happens that Abraham was a righteous man. Oh, yeah. He was one of them fellas. Jesus, man. <laughs> Amen. He was one of them. And then when he went there, he, you know, he asked for his wife. He didn't know that was his wife. He said, no, I won't take her. And he did. They had this all made up now, her and Abraham. We know Abraham was his surname, Abraham before that. But he had it made up. You know, protection at that time. No harm would come to her. But guess what? The Lord spoke to that place of white man here. That woman, Jew, there, she's a married woman. She has a husband. Not for our praise. That's not the exact word, but that's the exact one you're reading. I wouldn't lie to you about it. Amen. One time I probably wouldn't have said it about my hymn no more. I'm a different than people now. Yeah, I was singled out too, just like you was, set apart. But anyhow, the next morning he got to Abraham. Why would you do me in my household like this? But the Lord spoke to spoke to Emily. He said, Wait a minute, I ain't touched her. She's still true. I ain't done no harm. Not been with him. And like I said, the next day, next morning, went to Abraham. Abraham, Abraham, why did you do this to me? What did I ever do to you to, you, to have you to do this? But Abraham was honest. He looked at me and he said, I prayed with harm would come to serve her. She is my wife, but I didn't lie to you. I ain't lying. She is my sister. We had the same father but different mothers. Amen. I call that a half lie. It's deception, actually, what it is. It's deception if you're used that way. 
Guess what happened in pulpits today? Oh, oh yeah. That's the reason you see these big churches that they got all these big fancy windows in. That's the reason you see the big steeple out there and there's no parking place out front either or in the rear. Why deception? The Bible speaks of deception. I want to go. I want to go over here a little bit, and I want to read some more. I want to go over to here in First Peter about five and one. You don't have to stand. How many of you love the Lord here? I'm preaching to a lot of people today. Nobody did. Everybody's alive, to Jesus. Are we elders in the church? Now, I'm not talking about age now. I'm talking about, well, this has been on this way for a while. It's been doing some endearing and persevering. Now, we've been doing a few things. We've been through some valleys. But we learn to overcome. They know where you can go but up when you're in the valley. You've hit the bottom. That's where you're at. You can lay down digging that old clay if you want, or clay if you want to. But you know if you got Jesus, you're going to move on. Because you've overcome things before. Right? And you know that life just out there. You hear me say it many times. You don't always have to sit back through faith. What's, what's, what's that word, faith? The substance of things hoped for, everything of things not seen. What is it? We can all pray, and all our prayers may not get through. But somebody got to heal one day. Why is today things scientific fault took like a year or two? It probably means not question me. Why? We're not following the commandments. We're not worthy for a healing. We're not worthy to talk to the master no more. Why? Because our good was even spoken of. We were seen where we shouldn't have been. We talked where we should have been. Y'all, everybody loves everybody. You can preach love all day long, an idiot, without you'll not make it. Love conquers all. But in churches in March, all you hear it. Love, love, love. This place called hell, you hear right? New brief. Place called hell. I don't want to go there. This is a place of torment. Amen. There's going to be a lot of people there. Probably most of the politicians. <laughs> but you know what? The thing of it is, it's God's people are chosen people. I didn't choose to be this way. I was chosen. I didn't choose to act this way. I was chosen. They was such a thing as death, burial, and resurrection. One day I died out. Yeah, they even had a funeral on me because the old timers I had around me and I was a fun boy. And we played basketball weekends and played a few cards there. And the horseshoes over yonder. Guess what? I wasn't. They didn't like me no more. I was no more their friend. I was absolutely dead to them. They didn't even want to talk to me. Because you know what? I went down that watery grave. The symbol of death and burial and resurrection. I was resurrected as a new man in Christ. But first, I had an old fashioned all. Boy, I don't know why I got on this. This wasn't what I had in there. But guess what? It brought me in there somewhere. I'd almost say it is. You know, we look for it. But I had a repentance come out on it. I had that old contrite and broken heart that moved. I had a void in my life. I couldn't fill it at the bowling alley. The ball game didn't do it no more. I sat on the side of the bed and I wept. There's something I'm missing here. It wasn't a wife. She was there. My children were still with me. I had a job. Well, what was it? It was a lack of Jesus. There was something moved up on me. From the time I was a boy in the trees, turned the sleeve up and obviously to the Almighty. When he's getting ready to pull water on them, that they would spread forward green, that we could look at their beauty and know that they paid honor to Jesus. God moved on me as a child. I always feared him. I always feared him. What's wrong with today? Have no fear of God no more. Values and morals. If you're a good old boy, you're all right. That's a lie straight out of hell. Hell will be your home. Your people don't like hearing preaching like I got. Like I do, but I love you. It's in your heart. Yes, God loves you. But if I love you, I'm going to tell you that the way to God is straight and narrow. That broad way there's many and far there in. But the boundaries of hell has been extended every day for those that have been for devil and his angels. Not for God's people today. He died that you could have life and have it more abundantly. You don't have to sit around cry and weep for your milk. Jesus is a deliverer. He's the one that gives us faith to overcome.
today. Family problems are not a problem no more with Jesus. He's the chief counselor. Amen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'll get over here in a minute. Fun ain't Blake. <laughs> I'm excited. To the elders which are among you, I exhort, who am I also an elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Uh, oh, yeah, here's a good part. Feed the flock of God. Oh, I love you. I love you. That's all right. You can look out if you want. Just make your body be present and see you're in the house of God. And we'll go to heaven together. That's all right. Nothing wrong with that. I know you're a witness down to ball game. You told me that you go to the first one every dear down yonder. That way I'll lift you up. And the old place I've had people tell me, I go to ball games to be a witness. Yeah, you probably go to the stripper bar to be a witness as well. What happened to you? What's wrong? People don't tell like God is anymore. They make excuses go out here and cheat with the devil and whore on God. Then they want to plug at you and act like you're ignorant. That you don't know they need to get in God's book. He said, touch not him not the unclean thing. Don't even look at it. Stay away from it. You don't want the devil hanging all over you. You can't do nothing for God. If you got one arm in the pot air stir in the world, stay out of there. Put your arm in God. Three prayers don't get answered. We took on his name. The marriage vow, we took it on. We took on his attributes. We're supposed to. We're supposed to be a changed person. We gotta get out of these hellholes of the world. Change. Change. And you can't help them change. Nobody has come up and tell you how different you are. You are annoyed. There'll be something inside you that's a happy spirit. You have a happy countenance. You can't shut up. You won't tell your neighbors about it. You won't tell the church down the road about it. They might not want to hear it, but you know what? Out of love, you've got an obligation to tell them anyhow. <laughs> and you may not like it, but you know what? Sometimes love hurts. When you love them, you tell them. You need to stay out of that wickedness. You need to get a little bit more in these service like Paul. You need to get in your secret place and talk to the man above in his name of Jesus. He's not upstairs. He's right here and right there. He's in our house tonight. Do you want to meet him? Amen. If you have needs, he is a supplier. You've got the key to the kingdom. Faith unlock the door. Amen. Faith unlock the door. Don't you what faith was? Oh, faith comes back here and hearing the word of God. Oh, that puts it on us, don't it? We we got to tell them about it. You got to get in the house of God somewhere. Oh, you can't stay home and watch the local news and please God. Those are about the worldly things. God's people are about heavenly things. You understand? We're, we're, we we got a way out here. He laid down a blueprint here. He gives a GPS called the Holy Ghost and a guy that's snoring. There's no other way. You can't sleep through the window. You can't put a ladder up and down like Santa Claus. He is the door. He is the way, the truth, and the life. It's not in you out here having big times on the world. We're no longer of the world. We should act different, walk different, fit different. We're different than Christ Jesus. We're not ordinary. Amen. I kind of like that myself. Amen. Amen. To feed the flock of God which is among you, take the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. We don't have to tie you up. We don't have to constrain you back up. Huh? We should have something to draw people. And we do. And we have. You know, they probably drive by and been stirred out here. Don't get, don't get disappointed, disgusted. Don't give up on God because they filled up with sinner people. That we haven't won so. You know what the Jim asked me? I had some tar put on a truck of mine a couple weeks back. I mean, you get saved. Well, I can't tell him that. I'm not God. We had 26 to get to the altar. All 26 men, I got saved. I don't know. It's not me. It's up to God. But guess what? If you keep seeing them, we keep the week out in the house of God. If you see them in here and they're sitting in their table and see the word they're at, you said they've been a change going on with their life. Oh, something got a hold of me. That's what happened to me. Oh, I thought I was it until something got a hold of me. Humbled me down and told me that I was a nobody without him. And that voice started getting big a little bit of time. And when I got saved, 
I do. There was something in the world that not necessarily take time I couldn't explain. The Congress couldn't do it. The Secretary General couldn't. But Jesus did. He filled the void that I couldn't buy down to a pharmacy. And that's what he did for us. He purchased us with a price. We're paid in full. Now it's up to us to do our work. You want to break that contract with him? You made a commitment with him. Lord, if you pay my electric bill, I'll go to the church tomorrow night. Shame on you bargain hunters. Jesus gave it to you freely. He gave it to you freely. Most of it's when he called on me. Uh, ball joint fell off the car. I need to spend you praying for me. Pray five years. And then they expect healings. Then they come in the house, God tell you, oh, I love you. Sure they do. When you fix your ball joint. You know, Jesus is a watchman. He knows the problems. He's had a seen eye. He sees everything. You can hide from me. You can hide from the pastor. You can hide from me, some of the congregation. You can hide from He doesn't see you. Be sure your sin will find you out. <laughs> Amen. That's what it is. But let me tell you what. Your righteousness is going to be front and center if you honor the Lord. It's going to be front and center. And it's going to manifest itself to you. Because you get like me and Brother Larry rest of We can't shut up sometimes. Sometimes we actually interrupt. we got to stick our little two cents in. Because why? The Holy Ghost moves up you so strong you can't help yourself. And I ain't seen the one get offended. Thank God. See, I can't work in these other denominations. Because when they say can't, I go, oh, yeah, can't. They don't like it. They don't like it. Oh, you can't come against them like that. Preach that love. I'm going to tell you what hell's waiting on. Amen. <laughs> I love the Lord. Neither is being lords over God's herding, but being an example to the flock. Would you expect anything different? Did the pastor so love? Humble? You always stand out the pastor. I tell, I tell everybody this that I mean. I'm going to a church where he's humble. I'm not doing it to exalt you because God already has. I can't do a thing for him. I can't do a thing for you, but Jesus already has. For his young men in here, and my feelings are hurting everybody come out here. I want you to know that I apologize for them, but I love you. They should hear you. That God, he starts out. You know, you've got to start out young people in the village. It's a shame that people didn't come out here. They did hurt me, brother. Larry. Not because they're your children, but they're a child of God. Each and every one of you out here. You keep in there, dear, don't let it bother you. You stay in God's word, you keep delivering. I need to say it, God, it's been bothering me. That's been one thing trying to keep me in the valley. Why don't they love them enough? They don't have to be relation. They should get out to the house of God and see the Holy Ghost move up on these young men that can quote Bible, that the college kids and graduates up here at the engineering school and all these in the political party can't do what you do. They don't know the word that you know. They don't know the word that you know. It's a shame today. But that's why. But guess what? I know that you all are going to carry the banner. That's what hurts me worse. You know, we may be looking at prophets in here. The one that's going to cause arms to grow back. The legs to grow back. The cancer to disappear. There may be one of these young Christians in here. And we didn't support them. I'm not talking about us. The ones that look the other way. The same anointing you have, I have, they have. There's no difference if you're in Jesus. He's not a respecter of person. We do it differently. We don't always look. I like the first year. I like when Brother Jason does demonstration different. I like it, Brother T. I like it, Brother Butch walks in. You can see me like because they all give you something to chew on. It may be a little different, but it's the Spirit of God. It's not all. It's important to me. You can look back at me. Brother Bush come back patting me on the shoulder and he didn't know it would come in. I jumped over and hugged him because they're men of God. I hug everybody because I love them. You know why I do that? I do that because I love them genuinely. I may not see them tomorrow. Lord, may take me on. And it'll be the last time I see you in the flesh. So you remember this. Brother Mark will hug me. He's laying in his old coffin and everybody loves Jesus. If you love Jesus, you can't keep loving these people. Especially them and saying, what? Household of faith. Those that stand. Those that don't weep walking around and fall over. Those that stand up for Jesus. Look at you with love. Those that, Bible says, those that endure to the end, same shall be said. Their perseverance going on with that. Enduring means you will have problems. It don't mean everything's smooth, like I keep saying. If it's easy, everybody do it. But they don't understand when you get a hold of Jesus. You get a hold of Jesus, He makes it easy for you. If you follow His commandments, if you're short armed with God, you're in trouble. When they call you up to pray and you can't touch nobody, you're in trouble. You're the first one to know. Because you're looking around seeing the first moving on somebody else. Like 
somebody stole yours. No, you gave it away. You didn't follow his commandments. You let him down. When he told you to witness out there, and you didn't do it because you were ashamed. People said, Walmart. That, I told you a story about my lettuce and onions where that craving for. God sent me to a woman down there. Nothing to me. Let me tell you something other. They ain't one thing about it. God pride says. I wish my body tried to be presented. They put pride in me. There was no pride in my God. He came and he gave his life for this old bunch, old vile, wicked bunch I beat. Mean. He loved me that much. He didn't have to, but he did. He didn't pay me on payment. So I'll, have to, well, I'll, I'll pay the rest of it if you do all right. He took a chance for this old boy. He said, son, I love you. You get out there and do what you can do. Back on the old guitar, praise me. Speak for him. They'll let you speak and tell him about the righteousness of an almighty God. The one that died at Calvary suffered for us. Nobody suffered like he did. What he said in Paul, it's hard. And they wanted him to defend himself. He kept his mouth shut because he loved you and I. The one that was poor. The one that didn't have all this, that, and other. He wanted to respect her for He loved them just as much. Amen. Not like any big church he talks about. You can sit in your earth. When you see you may be on the, the town council or whatever. Some poor man gets in. He's sitting up there to see him move you out of the way to sit him down. That's right, right at the respect of a person. You looked on that outward appearance of that person and don't know the heart. Let me tell you something. Look what happened to Lazarus and the rich man and all his abundance. Oh, when that boy was opened up and he was a bosom of Abraham. Oh, he knew then that he made a mistake. But he was a little bit late. Go tell my brother. There were ministers out there. My brother J.R. Brother Larry, these young men and sisters out there. She said, if they don't hear that, they ain't going to hear me. Hey Amen. There are people preaching today. They're preaching God where hell is still hot. It's still there. It's waiting on you today. Don't give up on God. Hey Amen. Whatever you need, He's a supplier. Go into His warehouse. Get on your knees with that contrived broken heart. Say, God, I have a need. I, I am willing to sacrifice the thing of the world for you, Jesus. And that's what He does. I love the Lord tonight. Let me tell you, I wouldn't be here one for him. One for him. Amen. He said, when the chief shepherd shall appear, oh, well, I'll tell you what. You better have put on that rope of righteousness. They better not be no spots there. You may not spill something for the world on it. If you have, you are in trouble. People say, oh, I think the Lord will look over these little things. Oh, that's not what I read. I read 548 of Matthew. Be you perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. He told Abraham, at 99 years old, walk before me and be thou perfect. He said, if Noah was a perfect man in his time, and walking righteous, so was, so was Moses. They need to be perfect from one of the most words 99 times. Perfect is mentioned in the Bible 129 times. It is referenced through other means. Perfection. Because if you don't strive for, I'm not talking about this outward man. This heart's going to be perfect. We make mistakes. We fall. That causes valleys. But we overcome. We have an advocate with the Father of Jesus Christ the righteous. But if you sin every day, you are a sinner. He no longer has your name written in the land book of life. It's been blotted out. Chief Shepherd, Jesus, shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. It's not going to tarnish. It's not an invitation. It's not 14 current cheap silver or whatever. It's a real deal. Guess what? So was a man that gave it. He's Jesus and never the name is above all names. He don't do nothing halfway. It's full proof our way. He's brings you through the fire and you come out a changed man. Better than pure gold. He said, likewise, ye younger, submit unto the elder. What he means is knowledge. Therefore, he's listen to them. Listen to them things that's been through all these valleys. Listen to daddy's, mom, dad's, and uncles, and friends and, that you know that walk into the likeness of Jesus every day. We all. How many of us are truly Jesus people? How many walk in the righteousness? The best you know how every day. And I know we make mistakes. Amen. We're proud of that fact. I'm proud that I have the Holy Ghost, that guide that tells me. People look around, well, I didn't know better. I have to read the Holy 
was an important. It will tell you, don't say this. Don't do that. Don't go there. Don't show yourself with this group over here over there. No, you can love everybody. Love is an excuse for you to go to ball games and with somebody. Like I said earlier, God did, they did when he, thank you, Lord. When the Pharisee, when he wore the long clothes, God says he did poke. What was he? Inside they got grapes with They cried, swank, snot, and like that. And they looked at on the outward for the inside. But wait a minute. That still don't stop you from honesty and doing the right thing. Because guess what? When you get the inside that, the outside's going to look at way. But see, they had it kind of backwards. The outside man can't clean up the inside. They kind of had it in reverse. It takes that, that, that Jesus man to move in here. A little contrite, broke heart. Then he's just cleaned you up a little bit. I'm 65 years old. And I came to church here and I started cleaning up a little more. I started washing my peace and juice. Why? I don't want fault found with me in Jesus. You'll say, well, that's something little. No, it ain't something little. When they pass by me, I want these clothes to stand out. I want them to tell them, here's 93, Brother Mark, but they're going to sleep, sir. You know he lost his mind? I have. I give it to Jesus. I, it's no longer of the world. That's what I want, because I am pro Julia. That's a conversation piece. Say, wait, Brother, I can pray with you. you. Do you know my God? Oh, yeah, well, tell God is good all the time. But a song of praise in his heart of life. God is good all the time. People don't understand that without God you are nobody. You're doomed for a devil's hell. And there's no other alternative. There's two masters that you can serve. One is of the darkness and one is of the light. What correlation does darkness have with light? None whatsoever. Light, they're not really not. I said it's a lot, but think about it. If you don't research it, know this thing is true darkness. It's just an absolute light. You know there'd be a room for the sinners. And Brother Larry could walk in and guess what? It starts lightening up. The sinner can walk in and it starts lightening up. Because they know by your countenance and your character that all oh, you are dead. Why do they have something against Jesus, people? I don't understand that. We're the ones that love them. We're the ones that tell you it's a holy and it's a righteous way. It's a consecrated way. You can't sin every day. That's what they ask Paul. Can you sin? He said, God forbid. You can't sin every day. You're a sinner. But here they go. We all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We all sin now. Have the past tense. I was once a vile sinner, wretched soul. Was I miserable like the Bible said? I was all those things. But guess what? That's right. That's exactly right. When God got a hold of me, it was no longer. I wasn't in the valley of sin. I did worship idolistic things. My God is a live, breathing God. One that I could call and he delivers. I don't pray today, God. The monkey God, Allah, Muhammad. His name is Jesus Christ. He's a woman I repent and I was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for a remission of sins. Amen. Then I received the Holy Ghost. That's not hard to find out. You know, the Lord said, you know, the same way I sent you to heaven, I'm going to retire. He was God. We did feel When are we going to see the Father? Well, can you imagine that? That's like me in today. But when you, you're doing all these things. When we go see Father, What's wrong with you? They talk about dumb man. They don't talk about you more. Because they're procrastinating. They wait to the last minute where they can find something on you and talk about you. And what do you say? You mean you've been with me? I'm perfect. You've been with me this whole time? You've seen all these miracles? And you haven't seen the Father? What's wrong with you? I bet these estimation points are Jesus. Right? And I think they sense of humor. Big estimation points are. You've been. How dumb are you? You've been with me. You haven't seen the blood. I told you I'm going to go away. In the same way I leave, I'm coming back. I told you you got to have it with the Father. What was the Son's name? Jesus Christ the righteous. All these things tell you who he is. He said, I'll never leave you alone for a <laughs> I'm glad I am, preacher. Amen. So likewise, you younger, submit yourself unto the other. Ye of all you to be subject one to another and to be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. I guess y'all miss me having to talk to pay, don't you? Hard to have to pay, maybe a ring there. One well, of that nose piece might not hurt. I can probably stick one of that in my nose too. I'm proud of like that. If you come in, look and see Jesus, till all that will come out. He will clean you up. Well, people are like hearing that. No wonder we can't get to enter in no more. Brother Mark, when we preach this straight out stuff, killed every one of them. They all leave. But if you're sincere about God, you're going to listen a while. 
of that old man. He's dead. They buried him. They all had funeral of him. A lot of my best friends. Oh, yeah, that was broke fire. Well, how come you ain't going out with me no more? What happened to you? I used to be a bowler. I hope I told you that now. I worked the bills fine. I was delivering, delivering lumber over Louis Kentucky, right outside of Louis Kentucky, back to the hill there, where, where the lake is. I can't think of the name of the lake. But I was over there. The guy used to bowl with years ago. I bowled in Lamson now. He said, won't you come up and go bowl with me? I said, sir, I can't. I can't. I was in a hurry. I couldn't explain to him that I was a Christian, that I honored Jesus, that I worshiped the Lord. But where I used to go to church, one of our, he said, I seen I seen Wayne the other day. He didn't say brother, but he didn't know I was sinner, man. I don't know what he's saying. See, man, this is. He used to bowl, see, he's a good folks. He wouldn't even offer, so he couldn't right now. He, he's got six in the family. Bless him, folks, he was so poor. He could just be sad to do that for God. Oh. Oh. So the next time I went, they packed me on the back, too. I've never thought that son. Proud of Center man. As far as I know, he lost his life. He had a heart attack about two years ago and died of her food. But I used to talk to him all the time about the Lord, but he didn't realize it at the time. But we had center people back at that time, you know. He didn't know that. But people don't know what you need to go through in order to get to God. We've all went through things. Amen. We've all went through things. But you overcome through Jesus. You overcome through Jesus. It said, oh, I read it already. I, I'm, I'm reading it. I like it. Likewise, ye you younger, submit yourself to the elder. Yea, of all you to be subject one to another and be clothed in humility, for God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. To the humble will so they're born under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. See, if we can just get the world, we get, we get people here who don't know the joy of serving God. Just get them in here and get to tell them. This is real. Nobody paying us to do this. We're not getting no kind of filthy lucre or money on the table or whatever to do this. We do this called this inside man. That's what our responsibility and our vocation is. Even all of us vocation. Sitting out here. You don't have to claim the name of a minister to be a minister. When you're out telling people about the love of Jesus. That you know what? You don't have to have buy clothes and buy and drive a Cadillac. He loves you. You can walk and carry no stick for a cane. God died for you. He's not a respecter of a person. And I wish the world could get a hold of it. You don't have to mark up and be something special. You can come to the altar and be delivered. Set free. No longer in bondage and tied up to the things of the world. The world is, is taking it. I'll tell you what, they're killing us. The people here all around us. And they're just a chosen few of us. It's going to stand. So way back, we'll tell you a feel good story. I want to tell you about Jesus. He is. He's love. He's pure love. All of it. You imagine how hard it is to sit there upon his hall and they're calling you the king of Jews. Well, you've got to say for yourself. I am that I am. I'm just who he's saying. That's me. Didn't try to defend himself. Why? He loved you and I that much. He loved you and I that much. And he was the only one. Oh, we'd be in trouble if he couldn't have done it. Well, I guess what? The Gentile people would be in trouble, right? With that time. He turned to us when he's over we grafted in and my father. We was adopted. Hey man, we are adopted. And when you think of that, think of the children that you've got in your region that God has given you. Hey man, I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean it in a good way. You know how blessed they're going to be when they get up. And they said, you raised me up in righteousness. You put before me the path of Jesus and I can walk there in. That everlasting life could be mine. Where they would say, God knows what he's doing. You know what? If Abraham, he was scared of fear does it a lot. Not just Abraham, he's a little bit scared. So God can take care of situations. He can take care of situations. He didn't have to tell him that was his sister. He says, my wife. His son done the same thing. No, I said, but you know what? God had two righteous men there. But he didn't know uh, He didn't know that Amalek was righteous. He didn't know that. It's like us today, we try to fix things. We stumble over everything. I make it worse. Sometimes I can't even apologize right. I just get down and cry. Let the Lord read my mind. I can't even say the words I need to say. 
Did you ever do it? Amen. That's what God does to me. He gives you a heart of love. Larry was talking before church about what they helped me in. Boy, did you all know how much you helped me through your testimony? We don't always spill out everything that's going on in our life. People around us and family members who, you know, who talk down to us, mean to us. Then when you say, well, you know what? Humility, humbleness, temperance. I'll never forget temperance right at the top. Be sensible. Don't blow up everything. Before you open your mouth, think about what Jesus would do. See, I never did need one of them braces. Well, I got the Holy Ghost it's in here. When you say something to me, I said, what would Jesus do? I don't have to put it out here. I, I've got it in here. That's the best way to do it. Once you've got it in here, they can take your Bible. They can take your life. But guess what? They can touch your soul. That's what the Abraham, that's what the Jesus told the devil about God. So i got one out there you can try, but you can't touch your soul. Oh, Lot, boy, well, he persevered, didn't he? He endured all the pain of all. Man, he's sitting there scraping in places and different things that he went through. Lost all his family. Wife done worse than put him on the couch. She didn't even want him no more. Because your God died. Man. She didn't want him. But guess what? He kept serving Jesus. He didn't back up. He didn't step back and say because of your political correctness we're going to go along with this. Jesus knew he was going to didn't he? He knows all things. He knew the end when he knew the beginning. This was all planned. It wasn't no accident. Everything that lines up today is God's. He knew it before. He knew we were going to be in the creek tonight. He knew we were going to lift his hand. I'm proud of that tonight. Where were you at, Brother Markham? Just so far, I'm counting down. I'm looking forward to make 28. I didn't miss two. Two days out of the 30. I'm looking forward to making the 28. This morning I got up, I could hardly talk. I keep saying this. But if you've been there when you're that sick, you can't hardly go. But guess what? You know, even I'm getting older and I start praying. Oh, Lord, you know what? I sing that song. I didn't like to say or not. But guess what? I was going to holler, hoop, whatever it took. I was going to get it done. Because I'm not out here cutting records. I'm out here to glorify Jesus. I don't care what you think about me. What you think about Jesus when you think about me. Because that's where I'm at. I drive that old car with him. I come home with him. I come to the house and to the church with him. Wherever I go, there he is. I don't have to call him up on Secretary, is Jesus there? He's always there. He's always there. I've seen preachers do that. Well, he didn't answer my prayer today. Well, since I heard you or something you needed. He said, I'll supply you need, not you want. Be content in your situation. I'm content. I drive a boat flight and I'm happy. That's kind of like to me. It gets me to church. That's really where I'm supposed to be in church, right? Amen. He didn't say how to get there. If you ride a bicycle, we'll get you. Called dedication, did Are you rewarded for that? He's a rewarder of them. Damn. And diligently. Pastor, I like that word. Brother, I like it work diligently. Oh, that means you're going to work on it. Ooh, I just didn't. What's that word? The word comes in, I can't pronounce it. She's pretty strong. Circumstance? Her, sir, I can't say that word. Probably a good thing I didn't try either. Amen. Hey, Yo, check all our news. If you're going to make sense, look in every direction. Find out what's going on. Then make a godly decision. Amen. Then make a godly decision. That's what I like about seeing you. You see, I remember things you're not getting on the other side. I can remember things here. I can remember something Rebecca impressed upon me. Why? Because sometimes we're in situations where a certain son, sermon works for you. He'll help you get out of that valley. Right? What, what are we here for as a body? Why do they call it a body? Because we're many members, but we're one body, one faith, serving one God, one baptism. Uh, would you like to get down to Huntington Hall for the big church to go? Amen. Amen. I like putting knots on the nail table, too. I enjoy that. Every time you testify, you put a bridge on your head. Let me tell you something. Stop people when you heal. People don't want 
understand that. That's the reason you overcome with your testimony. Every time you get up and you start praising God, guess what? You're saying, I serve I serve a supreme being. He's the captain of the ship. He's a super pilot. He's whatever I need. He's a conqueror out here. He's a leader and a keeper of my soul. I just need to follow the Holy Ghost that keeps me in tune with God's way and God's life. Then store temperance up on me that I can be sensible, that I can sit back logically and determine what is righteous and what else. If it's of the flesh, it is wrong. It's unsafe. If it's of the spirit, it is God. It's in the right hand or the left hand. It's one or the other. You can't serve two masters. Try to finish your life with your <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I like the way Jesus does things. Amen. Just be trying along with the plan. It makes it easy for us to diligently seek Him. Casting all your cares upon Him for He cared for you. Be sober. Be vigilant. Well, oh, what's that vision for? Look, know what goes on right here. I would come in with a dirty pants like by watching my hole out there before the gravel was stepped out in it. Amen. If you was to accompany you, Kate, you would be an up to Christian and you would have to apologize and repent when you come to the house of God. Because they got you out of the car somewhere and told you a nasty, filthy little joke. And yet you, you know how. It wasn't a joke in God. It was the fact that you kind of laughed. <laughs> and guess what? They continued. They continued. You know, little conversation I get away from in a hurry. I said, wait a minute, I've got to go. Why? Because God said me all appearance of evil, whatever it may be. I don't sit in the council of the ungodly. I don't sit in the seat of the scornful. There's enough thing going on against God's people. I sure am not going to help them out. I'm going to stay away from them. Now, you can love them. But love from a distance, you don't have to join them. There's a difference. There's a difference in the ball games, the theater down here in the bowling alleys. Hey man, the beer party, say the difference in that. You, you can't go out and say, oh, I love them. Lord does too. But you know what? They ain't going to feel love when the hell's hot. You know, when they didn't make it in, they're not going to feel that way no more. Because you've got a choice. Who's your daddy? When you got saved and you took on the commitment. When I got married to my wife, I took on the commitment. Amen. I took on commitment. Some people take on vows. I'll do this and that. It's generally them as short timers. Army has some people they call short timers when you go in. They've been in there three years, whatever the term is, or close to it, and they don't like about three months of being out of discharge. They call short time. That's the way a lot of Christians are. They make a vow, but just for a short time until everything works out. I've got some families, praise people I've ever seen. When destruction and bad times come up, oh boy, they can pray. Make your hair stand up, all that good words, vain words, Bible calls them. Sophisticated words I don't even know. Well, they got them all, go them all out there. But next week, you see them driving down the road with a cigarette and a beer. What happened to that? That vow didn't last very long. Oh, yeah. That's what the devil does. Our own family's he doing that way. Hey man, they turned away from God. And but let me tell you something, we preach love. And if you don't preach nothing but love, oh you're gonna have a crowd pull in here. Do you get where I come from? As long as you're preaching love, you don't preach on hell, you're gonna have all you you have a pull. But there's a place called hell. If we didn't why are they call them sinners? Because it's sin. It's real simple. Why don't they like us? We're Christian, we're Christ-like. It's not complicated. It's either one or the other. You either sell Jesus, serve Jesus, or you serve the devil. There's no middle or no gray areas there. I call it a fence trail, but you can't go with one or the other. And I know without love, you ain't going to see God hold us in love. Jesus is pure love. I love everybody, so guess what? I am required. The leader of the flock is required. When I get up there, I'm required. When you're down at Walmart and you're asking to present yourself, you are required to tell the truth. To preach God's word and stay in His commandments. And if you don't, guess what? You're not Christ no more. Because you can't do them. You can't compromise. Guess what? Because you're giving an answer of the other leader who's the prince of darkness, not of Jesus. Jesus will walk not in the council of the ungodly. People know where 
church houses. If neck and dry heart works upon you, you will find yourself beside your bed, in beside your commode, at workplace, in the bathroom, down to the motel, wherever you can, under a tree somewhere, you're going to call on God. It is second nature to you. When a baby is born, it is nature for him to learn to suckle. It is instinct for God when he gives you a contrite and broken heart to look for him and you'll look for him in the right places. You won't be down at the ball games in these places. You will look for some minister or some child of God that can tell you about a Jesus that saves that will keep you and his joy. You're no longer in Egypt no more. When I died out, I died out to bondage. I wasn't in there no more. Amen? No more. Christ-like. Christ, be vigilant. Why do you want you to be vigilant? Know what goes on around you. How can I pay, pray for the president if I don't know what he's doing? Pray for your leaders of the country. Amen? Know what goes on. Pray for your neighbor over there. He may have been a sinner man. He watched some of his family may be sick. Get down on bending the knees of God. Swear one more time. Lord, spare them one more time, and I can get to them and give them one more word. That they still hope. Don't give up on you. I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of this. I've done this before. I got tarred ass in the same old ones that passed me by. Won't you go to church with me? I got kind of hard hearted about it. I thought, you know, I'm going to quit asking you whatever comes your way you deserve. And now I got to think, no, Jesus wouldn't answer like that. He kept right on so keep asking him and keep praying for him. Pray for your enemies. Pray for them that despisably use you. That don't like the way you drive your car. That don't like your children. That's mean and vicious towards you in the supermarket where they are. And they're out there, believe me. If you're a Jesus man, like I was talking about church the other night, we haven't heard it yet. But that's what happened. They passed by the lights off. The Lord reproached against the church. And he gets spread around the community. And some out there seeking God. They're going to go to that church down there. You know what happened the other night? And wonder why we can't. That's true. And wonder why we can't get people in the house of God. Because they're profane the Christians in here. They're on dangerous ground. They're on dangerous ground. So be sober, be vigilant. Won't they? Because your adversary, the devil, as a royal mind. Walked about seeking to be made a fire, who resist steadfast in the faith. So we resist him. We got something to resist him with. You've got to have Jesus you can't stand. I'm telling you right now, you've got to take him on and put him on completely, Brother Hunter. You've got to put him on and be true to Christ. You can't be a whore around on him and lie around. You can't take him off and hang him on the coat rack when you go out to the door because you want to fit in with the modern crowd. You want to be fly. You want to be political correct. Let me tell you, I don't need buddies out here. If I've got to hang up the road, listen to your filthy mouth. My ears are not garbage cans. You want to talk to me about Jesus, I'll say with you all day. I don't want to hear you dead was trash and when you run your neighbor down. How can you win when you talk about it? They talk about the time. I want to be like who I said was. When that servant, the poor way, that praise got holy unto Jesus. All the time when he took him tongues and got that, that lump of coal. Got that lump of coal. Then put it in his hand as part of life. Then put it in his hand out and took it to Isaiah's lips. Isaiah had fallen back a little bit. Put his lips. God forgave him. Amen. Forgave him. When God has a need, we want to sit out here in the audience here, in the pews, and up on the pulpit. We want to have confidence in each other that when we have a sickness, that somebody can call us. And right there, we'll get up from the dinner table, the breakfast table, whatever we do in the house, wherever we at. And when we can sneak off away from the public, where we can get on being and we can pray for that problem. Lord, you know, so and so called. Lord, we ask that you would deliver God, whatever the situation may be, that you would move up on that situation. That's what God people do. They call me, I don't want to around, go make me a sandwich, go in there and you know, sit up front of the TV or do something about it. I go to the bedroom and get on these old knees and I start praying. I start crying out to God. Your kids are important to me and my kids. You hear me? I love children. I sit with little children. I want to let them know that I love them. They have mistakes. Their words don't come out. Sometimes they want to please you and try to tell them what they have through the day. It don't hurt for you to sit and listen to them. In truth. Let them know that you're important. You're, they're important to us. All kids are to me. They're important to me. Live in front of them. They would give to you because of your life. It's because of your Jesus, Sister James, Brother Larry, that they would give to you, Sister Donna. Because of your Jesus. He seemed fit to give to you. And to you, because he knows you raise them up in the fear of God, and righteousness, and in holiness. Amen. That you would discipline them in 
devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. But resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called uh, unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while. Oh, it's just going to be a short while. After a while, make you perfect, established, strengthened, settled you. To him be the glory, dominion, forever and ever. Amen. By so a faithful brother unto you, as I suppose I have written briefly, exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God wherein ye stand, the church that is at Babylon, elected together with you, saluteth you, and so doth Marcus, my son, greet you one another with a kiss of charity, peace be with you, all that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. See, you just get by with a hug. I didn't have to kiss you. I love you. I appreciate you. I thank you for what you do. You want to thank you for more than anything. It's why I'm in the valleys and I don't have to tell you about it. Somebody's testimony or the preacher can get up. And guess what? It's edification. How many times have you said read something other and the preacher preached on it? That wasn't by accident or coincidence. When that happened like that, that was God. He identifies the body. He's going to tell you what Brother Wayne You may not know my name, but you'll know my spurry. And you'll get up and you will testify. I went through this today. I overcame that last week. That's what God does. He is a saving God. And he forgave Abraham. Forgave Abraham. Heavenly did too. He took care of him. Sent him on his way. Give him a thousand pieces of silver. Give him service to take care of him. See, God is forgiving God. See, I can wait. But you know, let me tell you about this. Amalek said to Sarah, Abraham is to thee. Now, I don't want to get on that and go on. This is wrong. I started it. Amalek said to Sarah, Abraham is to thee a covering of thy eyes. Oh, 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 who is Jesus? He's a covering to our eyes. He tells you, don't do that. Don't go over yonder. Pray for this one. Don't be over here with this one. Don't profane my name with that one. He's a covering to my eye. It's called the Holy Ghost. And he makes a difference. Because he is Jesus. He's the first and last. The great I am. He's the first of my faith. He wakes me up. He feeds me. He is my God. Amen. My Savior. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That's what he is. Been a joy. Pray for me. Pray for me. I thank Jesus. Without him, I'm a nobody. 